A tent pole. A tent pole is an industry term referring to a certain kind of movie being released by a studio. These movies are the financial anchors behind the entire studio. Uh, this is a script that I did. I actually use a prelap on the first page. You hear a plate shattering first before you see anything on the floor. That's a prelap. Hmm, looking good, looking real good. Loving the new studio. Just like mama used to make. Mm. <laughs> Hello everybody. I just wanted to wish you a happy new year. My name is Alan Northern bringing you filmmaking tips and tricks and today we are going to be discussing filmmaking and screenwriting terms that you should be familiar with. By the end of this video you are going to sound like a film professional. I really tried my best to combine a healthy mix of 16 film and screenwriting industry terms that you may not be aware of so if you'd like to help me just as I'm helping you Please give this video a like and let's get started. If you're looking for any key terms, primarily about formatting, I created a formatting video. I will put it in the cards up above and also in the description below. Now, before we get down to the brass tacks, if you are writing a screenplay, there is one screenplay software that I highly recommend and it's called Celtext, pronounced Celtext. After 10 years of using the software, I'm just finding out how it's actually pronounced. So the second one is the industry standard. It's called Final Draft. It'll run you about $250, but I always recommend using Celtex, Celtex, because it's free and the screenplay software doesn't necessarily dictate the quality of your screenplay. All right, terms. Shooting script. This is the final draft of your screenplay. When you're on set, this is the draft you'll be seeing handed to everyone. All the actors, production people, and the director will have this in hand. On this channel, we don't focus on creating a shooting script, we focus on creating a spec script because a spec script can actually be converted to a shooting script within a few clicks in the proper screenwriting software. So what are the things that you should not be doing or what things go on a shooting script? A shooting script will typically have numbers next to each scene indicating which scene you're currently on. It might have a Writers Guild of America number on it. It might indicate where the title is going to meet. It's going to say title begins here or titles roll here and you're just wasting space on a page. Just tell your story. It might have camera angles like close on this or wide on this. I know as screenwriters sometimes we like to play director but we don't want to do this in our spec scripts. We want to avoid that at all costs. And if we want to play director, we could actually separate our actions by line. And so each and every line implies to the reader that that is a new camera angle. Also, if you want to imply close on this or wide on this, that is determined by the level of detail that you describe an object. Like if you say this elegant, beautiful knob versus he opens the door then one implies a close-up, the other just implies he opens a door. Bear in mind that a marketable screenplay is about 115 pages, so whatever you can lose from that spec script, just take it out of there. Just take it out. Also, utilizing all caps in your actions, maybe you want to use it once or twice or three times throughout your entire screenplay. The only thing that you want in all caps in your action lines is when you're introducing characters for the first time. So when you're introducing characters for the first time, you put their name in all caps. Like how I'm sprinkling little pearls of wisdom all throughout this video? Yeah, I'm trying to make it more interesting. Anyway, give it a like if you like it or dislike it if you don't. If you're still confused, I'm going to place an example of a shooting script below so that you can see what a shooting script looks like and what not to do. Second term, spec script or submission script. So a spec script or a submission script is a script submitted to actors, agents, producers, studios, directors, etc. that you hope will be optioned, purchased, or produced. It's a proposal for a movie that you hope to get made. Remember everything that I mentioned to do for a shooting script? Yeah, don't do that here. Nine times out of 10, you'll be writing a spec script. Still confused? I'll put a link to a spec script below in the description so that you can tell the difference between the two. So script coverage or coverage is actually a term I learned in college and it actually refers to extensive feedback that your script is given. The idea is that an industry professional reads your script, reads it from beginning to end, and then writes their extensive notes, write their summary, and also at the end they grade it. So while they're grading it, the coverage document typically has a set of criteria that is based off of various elements of a good screenplay. So the reader will write their notes next to each section. 
So this enables studio executives or big industry professionals to look at the first page of the coverage. They see pass, consider, or recommend. This system helps weed out terrible screenplay so that only the good ones are in the hands of the important people. A tent pole. A tent pole is an industry term referring to a certain kind of movie being released by a studio. These movies are the financial anchors behind the entire studio. So they are films that the studio believes will make money. Think any Marvel movie, X-Men, Disney princess movies, Pixar, Fast and Furious films, Star Wars films. So again, these are movies where the studios basically anticipate making all of their money. They anchor the big film studios and ensure that they'll be in business for years to come. So these tentpole films help studios produce films that have much smaller budgets that are indie films like uh, Fruitvale Station or like Moonlight, films that just are for niched audiences that aren't anticipating you know, a big you know, return on investment. So tentpoles are like a cushion in case the other films on their docket doesn't make any money. High concept. So this is a film industry term that is sufficient unto itself to attract audiences everywhere. This kind of movie attracts audiences everywhere, regardless of the producers, directors, or writers attached. This film promises a peak emotional experience in big action scenes, sex scenes, or humorous moments. It's a story about a blank who wants to blank. It's a story about an ex-CIA operative who will stop at nothing to get his daughter back taken. It's about a group of superheroes who needs to save the world. A film treatment. A film treatment is a brief, interesting summary or breakdown of your screenplay. Now, I don't want to go into this too much because I've already created an entire video on what a film treatment is. You can check it out. I'll put it in the cards above and also in the description below. Logline, very important. It is a one sentence summary of your screenplay. Now, I don't want to talk about it too much, but the one thing I will mention is that you need this before you even start writing your script. And I have another video on that. I'll put it in the cards above and also in the description below. And you can check it out if you have not already. A story and B story. A story refers to the cinematic core of your story. This is the main journey your protagonist undergoes throughout the entire film and is most likely the reason why you stepped into the movie theater to see it in the first place. The B story is known as the love story or the emotional center behind the movie. I'll be making a video later on A Story and B Story because I just realized there are so many things to get into between these two terms, so stay tuned for that. A beat is the smallest unit of existence in your story, basically. That's basically what it is. It's the smallest unit that you can break your story down to. It's like the atoms of your story basically a small action or lack thereof. And a collection of beats create a scene, a series of scenes create an act, and three acts create your story. There you go. Don't say I didn't learn you something. Unsolicited. Unsolicited is a term used basically when someone does not want to be bothered when they didn't request something from you. Unsolicited basically means I didn't ask for it, so don't send it to me. So it's kind of an unspoken rule that if you send your scripts to CAA, Innovative Artists, or William Morris Endeavor, then they're not gonna read it because it is unsolicited. They are not going to read it because they did not ask for it. So pre-lap or pre-lap is a screenwriting term used when you'd like to have a sound or dialogue that precedes the actual visuals that accompany it. So this is also used when the dialogue or sound precedes the actual cut to the next location or scene. Let me see if I have an example here. Uh, this is a script that I did. I actually use a pre-lap on the first page. Uh, fade in, pre-lap, a plate shatters, interior rose home, dining room, late afternoon. So there you go. You hear a plate shattering first before you see anything on the floor. That's a pre-lap. So above the line refers to individuals who are in charge of the creative direction of the film or commercial. These guys are primarily the actors, the producers, the screenwriters. It basically refers to the people who make the most money. Hence, on a call sheet, they'll be above the line. Below the line. So below the line, that basically is everyone else who's not above the line. So that is the uh, everyone else, uh, people who don't make as much money. Uh, the production assistants, the grips, electricians, your costume, your editors, your special effects, everybody. That's below the line. Beat Sheet. It is Blake Snyder's legacy. It is basically the breakdown, beat for beat breakdown of your entire screenplay from start to finish. 
and it's very important if you're just starting out. It really, really helps you immensely find a sense of direction in your story so that it's not directionless and so that it's coherent and so that it makes sense. So Blake Snyder is the late author of a great book called Save the Cat that basically standardized a lot of screenwriting <laughs> all across the board. The idea behind this beat sheet is that there are a series of invisible events that occurs all throughout a commercially successful screenplay. And those individual, those um, invisible events are the reason why it's resonating with audiences everywhere. And Blake Snyder basically called it out and wrote a book about it. And uh, now everybody's pissed because it's like, ah, you know, my secrets. So if you'd like more information on what a beat sheet is and what those beats are, I've actually created an extensive video series. It's a three-part series. It's in the top left-hand corner in the cards above and also in the description below. If you'd like to take a look at the film I made, I will put it in the description below. And if you'd like to grab a Clover Key, which is a product for filmmakers, by filmmakers, then you can take a look at that below and perhaps purchase it if it suits your fancy. Um, and uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.